Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on this channel in which I'm going to show you how to do automated focus stacking with the R5 handheld. So in the past I already did a few videos on automated focus stacking. In this video we're going to explore if this works out handheld and yeah what kind of images you can get or expect to get. But first, as you can see, no longer in Portugal. Currently over the holidays we're back in Germany, but there are a few more videos from Portugal coming up. Next one will be Lisbon and then also the Algarve. And the video I show you now, the in the field part of the video is actually from the Algarve. So taken out of this video already. Also follow up trips already booked. So we'll be traveling again next year. So new videos will be coming. I'm not yet announcing where we're going. First, I want to make sure we actually get there with the current travel situation. But yeah, enough waffling now. Let's jump into the video and see how this focus stacking with image stabilization on the R5 actually works. So I'm now at Praia Castelejo, which I wanted to scout for sunset, but yeah, the tide's coming in for sunset and I realized all the rocks which are interesting for foreground will be submerged in water. So I won't photograph here for sunset, but I did the scouting and I will be back most likely in two or three days when there's low tide. But what I found was this beautiful rock structure here, this wall of, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of rock it is, uh, certainly not in English. <laughs> so what I want to do, I want to photograph it now. Didn't bring the tripod though and I need focus stacking here. The good thing is with the R5 I can use the automatic bracketing, I can use image stabilization and if I'm at 1 60th of a second what I can do I can just hand hold the camera, focus at the foreground, press the shutter, I have a two second timer and the camera will be taking those stack, those photos so fast that yeah all the images will easily overlap. There might be a little difference which I can easily remedy in Photoshop by auto aligning those. So yeah, I'm now taking the photo. And that's it. That's simple. No tripod needed. And now I think there's a bit of rain coming, so I'll head back to the car and maybe we'll be here again in two days. So back in the studio and it's time to look at the images I took at the Castelejo beach and I also want to fill you in a bit more on the settings I was using. So here's the image I showed in the video in the in the field portion and I took it what you can see here at 1 45th of a second f9.5 for optimal sharpness 29 millimeters and ISO 400. So I think I could have even gotten away with ISO 200 and having 1 20th of a second because the image stabilization I have when I use the 1535 lens which has image stabilization in the lens combined with the R5's in-body stabilization gives me the ability to basically take handheld photos up to I think 1 4th of a second if I take individual photos and yeah for stacking it's usually a sequence of photos so I would take even short exposures to keep the camera stable for the complete sequence. So with 1 45th of a second I'm pretty safe if I take a stacked sequence. In this case I think it was six or seven photos which I'll need to blend and those align pretty well which I show you in a second. So if you have the R5 or any other camera with in-body stabilization and this automated bracketing feature just experiment and see how far you can push it and also in terms of ISO how high you can go and find the sweet spot that allows you to take your photos if you have your tripod left in the car like I did. Now before I show you the stacking in Photoshop let's also look at the other images I took. So here's a little wider view and here you also see why I needed focus stacking. So let's zoom in here at the foreground. I think for this image I focus somewhere here in the middle. So that's basically the middle photo from the sequence. And if we go up here into the background you see out of focus. And the same is true here for the very close foreground here in the corners. So here the focus stacking definitely helped. Then I also have here a vertical composition of those rocks which shows the same problem. You see here this is a photo for the background upper left corner which leaves the foreground lower right corner completely out of focus. So even if I had used f16 or even smaller I wouldn't have gotten everything tag sharp. 
And now for the final photo I took, and this is also the one I'm gonna take over into Photoshop. This is another composition I found here and I like it very much because of all the diagonals and all the colors here. So you have the orange rusty colors of the rock and then the bluish tint which is the result of the blue sky above which reflected off those rocks. So to get those stacked up let's go to the develop module and I already did the basic adjustments to this photo so let's have a look at the before and after. So on the left you see this is how it comes out of the camera and on the right there's a lot more contrast and also color contrast which I emphasized. What I typically now do is I apply those settings on just one photo from the sequence then I select all photos in the sequence and then I can just click down here on the sync button which brings up the synchronized settings. I press check all to also include mask and all the settings I did and I click on synchronize which I already did so all the settings I did to this one image are already synchronized to the other images. Now the next step with all the images selected I can just right click on any of those go to edit in and I just scroll down here to open as layers in Photoshop. Now that all layers are loaded into Photoshop, you see here we have six layers and let's first have a look how much they are misaligned. I'll just zoom in on the middle and we're gonna toggle the different layers and you see there's a little movement because I can't hold the camera that still, but it's just in between the shots and you see it's not that much. So for six photos for this stack, there's only minor misalignment, which can be now easily solved by going to edit, auto align layers. And here I just leave this to auto and press OK. And now Photoshop will align the photos sufficiently to do the focus stacking. Now that this is done, let's have another look. I again toggle through the layers and now you see there's no shift at all. You just see how it gets softer and softer because of the focus shift. Now the next step, and this is different to previous videos about focus stacking, which I did. So in the past, when I take photos of wide landscapes, I usually do the focus stacking manual, which in my opinion works better. But here for such a relatively flat and also very detailed scene, I think the automated focus stacking that Photoshop provides could actually work pretty well. So let's have a look and go to edit, auto blend layers. And here you find the stacking feature of Photoshop. Uh, make sure to have the seamless tones and colors active, which shouldn't be needed for this sequence because the images were taken in very quick sequence and also I synchronized them in Lightroom. But I think it doesn't hurt to have this setting on just to have Photoshop tweak minor misalignments in light and color. Also I'll have this content aware fill transparent areas active and now we let Photoshop do its magic and see what we get from it. So what you now notice here on the right after the stacking there is this top layer which is called merge. So this is the focus stacked version. But in addition to this layer, you also see the original layers with the masks applied by Photoshop. So what you can now do if you find that Photoshop didn't do such a good job after all, you can go in and refine it. So when I deactivate this merged layer, I can see all the individual layers and I can also go into the masks and see how those look. And here you also see why I don't like the automated focus stacking feature from Photoshop so much for landscapes. It's very choppy and there are a lot of corners and it's much different to what I would draw if I were to do manual stacking. But for this image here, I think it works quite nice because this image is showing a very harsh surface and there it's quite okay to have this choppy mask. And now I would spend some time going over the complete image. So basically using the navigator here, I would go in at 200%, have this merged layer active and then scroll through the image. And here you also see already there we have a problem. Here Photoshop messed up. So let's deactivate the merged layer and see uh, where this area is coming from actually. So what I would need down here would actually be from this 96 layer. So I just deactivated the mask by pressing shift and clicking on the mask. So I can just check where this area is sharp. So what I can now do after finding out that I need this area filled in from the 96 layer, I just move this upwards. I put a black mask on it. And now after all, I have to do some manual stacking. So I just use a 
white brush 100% and I fill in this area. And yeah, this is a little bit tedious and annoying. After all, you did this automatic stacking and you would hope that Photoshop does it properly, but still same as if you would do it manually, you need to go in and check every area. So it seems that mostly down here in the lower parts, Photoshop messed up, which is not too bad. So I quickly fill this in and then I would just use this navigator here to move this rectangle around to make sure I hit every area. This takes a few minutes, but afterwards, and I just quickly skim through the image, I have an image which is sharp from very close foreground to background. I didn't need to use a tripod for it. The capabilities of modern cameras are so advanced now that you can achieve such results just handheld using a little higher ISOs, using the automated image stabilization and then features like this automated focus bracketing. And I think this is just great and a big help because I don't always need to bring the tripod. Yeah, and that's it with this tutorial. I hope you found this interesting. Also, make sure to experiment with this feature as usual. The settings I shared here, that's my personal preference. Also, what I said about I can shoot up until one fourth of a second handheld with the R5 and the wide angle lens. For you, it might be shorter or longer, depending on how still you can hold your camera. So make those experiments and then in the field, you'll know where the limits are and you can make sure to get tech sharp photos. So see you in the next video.